Hello, my name is Alan Burns. I'm going to be speaking about the spiral of silence theory. This is a theory heavily focused on mass media's influence on people and people's willingness to speak their opinion. So it's relevant even today, even though it's changed quite a bit. So I'm going to talk about the differences between then in the 70s and now and go over some of the key points of the theory. So this theory was developed by Elizabeth Noel Newman, and she was a German uh, PhD. She studied journalism and philosophy, and her theory is really grounded in a few different topics, which I broke down into key terms. So public opinion, which is the idea that the public ha or the perception that the public has on a specific topic, cumulativeness, which is the uh, overall bulk of a message that people receive over and over again, specifically from mass media. And there's ubiquity, which is that driving influence that mass media has on the public. And consonants, which is the mass media tends to agree with each other. So it's only one message that they're getting from each other, <clears throat> or that they're getting from the mass media. And one of the key experiments that she did was called the train test. And she didn't actually put people on a train. She just asked them if they would voice their opinion if they were next to somebody on a train for four or five hours. And so they did this on a bunch of different topics and they were curious what, what factors would allow somebody to speak up about their opinion. And that was the main uh, basis for her theory. So for this theory, I only gave one strength and two weaknesses, but I do think that the strength is very strong. So the strength for it is utility, and that's because it's really valuable to understand what will allow people to speak up. And so often that you have a long conversation with somebody and you realize they didn't tell you what they thought. So this theory is heavily focused on media's impact over people's willingness to voice their opinion. And although the Times have changed quite a bit in the last 50 years. Some of those driving factors still exist. So the weaknesses are the test of time. Like I said, uh, media's changed quite a bit. So her theory was focused on only a few different outlets for mass media. And now we have more outlets than you can count. There's forums, there's blogs, there's social media. Uh, the internet has changed everything about the way that communication happens. And so it struggles with the test of time because I don't think anybody could have predicted communication changing the way it has. The other one is logical consistency, and that's only because there's exceptions for every rule with this one. So there's the outliers where the, or the hardcore where they're willing to speak out anyways, regardless of all her um, considerations. And there's um, a lot of different reasoning people have and it's hard to understand when somebody would feel strongly enough about something to actually speak out. So as I mentioned earlier this theory has changed quite a bit. Um, the main focus of my consideration for how the theory has changed is social media and when she developed this theory there was only a few outlets and now there are multiple studies where they're really starting to consider how social media impacts people's willingness to speak out and their opinions. So the first one I have is about bullying and online opinion expression. And what they found is that there's more of a willingness to speak out your opinion. And it shows with bullying, which with uh, opinions that are very taboo, people are a lot more horrible online. Another one is the social media and social class impact on how they use social media and that actually impacts how what they're going to be saying online and the impact that social media has on them. So different classes are going to have different media inputs and different social media that they use. So it's going to change the way that their opinions form and what they think is consonant uh, with mass media. And then the third one is actually really interesting because they are working to create their own theory, which is this, uh, the spiral of social media theory, which is based on the spiral of silence, but a development where 
obviously it's a lot more back and forth with social media. So people in with the old spiral of silence, it's a one-way input. And that's the image that I have on the right, is it shows that people are all connected. They all have an opinion. So consonants could be uh, more of an actual public opinion rather than the media outlets. And so it's an interesting thing to consider. So for the application of this theory, I work in an engineering, so I am always going to encourage more of a scientific approach, <laughs> for better or worse. Uh, but one thing I would, I would strongly encourage is the development of understanding of social media platforms and effects, because there's a lot of different social media platforms, and I think that'll actually impact the way that it shapes the way people think, depending on which platform they're using. There's also the question of how algorithms affect people. Because uh, these social media platforms want people to stay on them, they point people in a certain direction for what they're seeing. So again, with consonants, they're only going to see what they want to see or what elicits a very strong response from that person. So there's a question as to how that affects people and how that affects whether they're willing to speak out on their opinion. I learned a lot during this research, and the few key there were a few key concepts that I really appreciated. So one was that she really considers what are the driving factors with whether somebody's going to speak out uh, about their opinion, and that's valuable to know for me as a leader because my whole goal is to have my team speak out when they think something. A group of people coming up with a solution is almost always going to be better than an individual dictating it. So. The other one is media impact on people's willingness to speak. And it's a little bit scary that people won't speak their opinion if they think that there's everybody else is in agreement that they're wrong. So it was an interesting thought process for me. And then the third one is that there's a lot of research left to do in this. Because communication is changing so much, especially from the media aspect, there's a lot of studies and a lot of different variable impacts that affect people on a day-to-day -day that we really don't understand yet.